What the, what the hell is this? A rejected P Phil? Yanni, have you seen your PR? It's, it's all just div suit. It's, it's gross. I always could have ever seen. I know, but it's React. Like how, I thought in React we just have to put in a bunch of divs. It's a mess. Let, let's call Jen. It's, it's just the worst. <laughs> Not Jen. She's going to yell at us again. Come on, Phil. Can't you solve this? No, we have to. We have to? We have to. All right. Let me, uh, let me just call Jen. Let's see. What's up, yeah? Oh, hey, Jen. Hey, how hey. you doing? Hey, Hi, uh, so, what you need? so you know that thing that we did last week that we couldn't really figure out? Yeah. Yeah, we're in the same hole again. There's just too many fucking divs. Yanni's done it again. Uh, y'all, come on. The divs, the div soup. What are you doing? It's React. Like, can you please tell us how can we use React? but not use so many divs. It, it would really help React as well because there's always people complaining it's fucking div soup. No, I know, I know. And yeah, it can be a problem. You know what? Why don't we get Dan involved? Dan? Dan Abramov? Oh yeah. Yeah, let, let's call him. I think, I think we need an actual like permanent solution to this because I'm hearing this all the time and I can't have you guys keep calling me. So how can I help? Well, we have, problem. we have this problem. You have the we div soup. We some div soup going on. Just too many damn divs everywhere. Um, okay. Let's just fix it in React. Uh, I okay. propose that we're going to implement the smoosh mode that will just smoosh all the divs together. A smoosh mode? What? That sounds great. Yeah. Like, like take all the divs and just smoosh them? Yeah, just get rid of all the divs in your application. Okay, I mean, we don't really need them anyway. That really sounds like a solution I've been looking for, man. Let's, let's do it. All right, so wh where do we even start? Like, I've tried to contribute to React many times, and I'm just not smart enough. Like, that code base, it's very intimidating. Where, where would we even start with something like this? Yeah, I think it is, uh, like, it is pretty complex, uh, but there are a few parts that are important. So I can uh, I can walk you through. There is a simple solution that we could do that would uh, smooth all the divs very quickly, but it's also a little bit uh, like cheating. So I'll show the simple solution first, uh, and then I can walk you through the React code base a bit more and show uh, the like actual solution uh, that 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 is like that teaches you more about React than the simple solution. Go for it, man. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to start. And feel free to like ask me questions uh, at any time, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, so I'm going to start by uh, sharing my screen. Let me see if that works. OK, can you, can you see anything? Yeah. Looks good. Awesome. So I have the uh, React master checked out here. Um, let me go to a branch called Smoosh. So I'm going to start by writing a test. Uh, so when we add new features to React, we usually start uh, with writing tests. And we write tests against the public API. So we try to use React and React DOM the same way uh, as a user would do that. Uh, so I'm going to open some test file, um, say React DOM, DOM test or something like that. Oh, I can see, I can see my autocomplete. Okay. Um, is, it, is the font size good? Yeah, it looks good. Where do these tests actually live in the code base? Like, where would I go look for these if I wasn't as good as knowing the file names as you? Yeah, I actually just picked, like, this isn't even, like, a very useful file by itself. It doesn't actually matter which one you open, so I was just going to clear it out. Uh, it leaves, so we have the packages directory, which uh, is, like, uh, top level, like, it's, like, Yarn workspaces, so every package, like, React, React DOM, uh, lives, lives in the packages directory, and then each package has a source folder. So here's the React DOM source. Uh, here's the uh, React package source. And inside of the source folder, there is uh, underscore, underscore, tests, underscore, underscore. 
Uh, so this is where all the uh, all the different tests live. Uh, it's not very uh, like it doesn't actually matter for most tests like which uh, which like usually the test test multiple packages at the same time. So like a bunch of our tests they uh, involve both React and React DOM and something else. So it, there is no strict kind of distinction between where to put them. But I guess like most tests live in React DOM slash source slash tests. And there is a lot here. Uh, I can actually just create a new one. So I'll, I'll create a, um, a new file. I'm going to call it React. Uh, the React smoosh test. .js, and I'll just copy and paste uh, some kind of placeholder. So I'll go here, some random test, copy and paste. I'm going to call this React Smush. And I'll add an empty test. Okay, so I'm going to run it now. Uh, so yarn test uh, dash dash watch, and then the name of the test file. So that will uh, run just as a watcher, and every time I save a file, it will rerun it. Uh, it's a bit slow to start, but then, then it works. Okay. Nice. So uh, let's let's write a test for uh, for our new motion feature. So I'll start with something simple. So uh, I'll create a diff as a which is like a container. I guess I'll call it container. And I'm going to do React DOM that render my app into that container. So app is going to be a component. And it's going to have some diffs and some, let's say, a dialogue. And a button. And then maybe it says hello. Um, but then the dialogue itself um, will also be full of divs. Um, so let's yeah, as many divs as possible. Yeah. So. This looks like the kind of React code I write every day. It's good to know that uh, we're doing it the dance style. So there's going to be some divs here. Okay, put hello. And then there's going to be the children. And uh, so the children are passed to the dialogue. And then the button is actually going to be a good component. So button is going to render an actual button. Uh, I think I messed up the indentation somewhere. Well, this is what happens with div soup. So. Right. Well, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll try to understand it from the error. I'm not sure where I messed it up. Uh, oh, here it is. And the button is going to render an actual button with its uh, text as children. Just with a bunch of words. Okay. Um, so we need to actually add an assertion. So because we use chest, uh, I'm going to use chest uh, expect utility. And, and I'll just check the HTML. Uh, so we want the HTML to be something like, so our solution mode will skip over all of those divs, and it will just render uh, the paragraph here. So I expect to see this uh, hello thing. And then it's going to render the button, uh, let's say, click me. All 
Right. So here is my failing test. Uh, so we expect to see this, but we actually see this. It's almost as if we should have written it that way to begin with. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. But let's see um, what we can learn about React by implementing this smush mode. So I'll start with the easy way. So the easy way is, uh, it is a little bit, uh, like as I said, it's a little bit like cheating, but uh, if you know React, uh, uh, you might know that even for cases when, like if you don't have styling on the diff uh, and you just want to return, a, return multiple elements, uh, you can do this with fragments. So you can write react.fragment instead, and that's actually the recommended way to do it. Uh, and so the uh, fragments don't create uh, extra uh, extra nodes in the DOM, uh, but they, they still let you group things. Um, and so what we could do is we could um, even like, of course, in a real app, you should fix it in your code. Uh, but in our example, we could uh, make uh, React, uh, we could make JSX turn diffs into fragments. Um, so the way this could work is, uh, if you know, when you write uh, this, uh, React actually, uh, the Babel JSX compiler actually turns it into this. It calls react.createElement, pass in uh, the, the type. In this case, it's a string, it's a div and then the props, and then uh, all the children. What we could do is we could override this function uh, to substitute div with React fragment. So that would be the easiest fix, I think. Um, so in order to do that, let's find uh, where it's defined. Um, so I, I already know where it's defined, but we can try searching. So uh, I'm going to search for create element equals Okay, that's not very useful. Maybe a uh, function create element. No, really, I can find it. Uh, function, oh, okay, yeah, it, it has arguments. So I can, I can find it this way. So we found two matches. One of them is uh, in React element and another is in React element validator. Um, so this one is only used in development. Uh, it has a bunch of warnings uh, and this one is used both in development and in production. So the validator one, it wraps uh, the, the uh, like real create element. So we're just gonna go here. Uh, this is the, uh, the core of, like when, when you call JSX, this is, where, uh, this is where we end up and this is where it like initializes the props, copies the children from, uh, from all the array arguments uh, after type and props, and then uh, all those children, it puts them into the props object. It resolves the default props. Uh, it uh, basically just creates that element object. It doesn't do much. Um, but we could, uh, we could go here and say, uh, if type is a div, so maybe we could start by making it uh, something else uh, just to see if, if that works at all. Um, yeah, so it says the tag lol is unrecognized in this browser, but we can also see that now instead of divs, we have lols. I think we need to uh, talk to the browser committee about adding the lol elements. I think that that would probably solve this problem. Yeah. I agree, it adds a certain lightness to web development that we're really missing. <laughs> Uh, it can be a part of the standard with wet, uh, and yeah, but the standards move slow. So uh, we, we got to like in the spirit of extensible web manifesto, uh, we'll do it ourselves. Um, so what we really want here uh, is to turn this into a fragment, uh, but oh, React is not defined. Well, that's because like, this file is React. There, there is no React because we're still executing this file. Um, so maybe we should look at what the hell is React.fragment? Is that like some kind of component or what, what is that? So I'm just gonna search for fragment column to see where it's defined. Then it's defined in packages React source React.js, React fragment type. And if we look at where that is defined, 
its shared React symbols. So we could add an import to that thing, uh, to the file we're in, and just grab it from there. But I just want to see what that is. So I'll, I'll go to React symbols. And it turns out that it's just, um, it's just a symbol. So a symbol is a JavaScript thing, which is, uh, it's, it's a primitive, kind of like a string, but it's not a string. Uh, it's like a unique uh, thing. And the, the reason we use it for, uh, for like fragments and other types um, is, so there is a cool feature of, um, of symbols that uh, they work across um, their, um, like their identities preserved across different environments. So like uh, even in different iframes uh, or when like different uh, JavaScript so I'm, I'm kind of fuzzy on details, <laughs> but uh, there, there are some cases where you have several, uh, uh, like I think in Electron this can happen, or there, there are different cases where you have a different set of globals. So like maybe even uh, like so, some of the browser globals would be different between those environments, like workers maybe, I'm not sure, but symbols would still be shared. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a good way to tag things uh, as being a uh, like a certain type of something yeah. and so sorry. yeah it's used um internally in arrays and other iterators too if you do symbol yeah. dot iterator you know you can access the iterator so mm -hmm. it's used even internally in javascript for this purpose yeah that, that's a good point so it's like a not nominal type in kind of thing it was actually super fascinating to see the other day i was reading the react code base the minified code base and given that the symbol definitions don't really minify at all, like out of the out of the entire uh, minified React.js file, the symbols are like a huge part of the the file now. Um, just an observation. It be a huge part of the file. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, like I didn't actually uh, jump actually out. actor weight, but if you read the file, like you know, the the, the top of the file is is just a huge amount of definition symbols. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste it. Uh, it has this like has symbol check for all browsers, but our environment has it. So I'm just going to copy paste this. Which is the cool thing about symbols is that if you use uh, symbol dot that thing, uh, that thing is going to give you the same symbol by its, uh, by its name. So I'll go back to react element and I'll say if type is diff, I want the fragment instead. And so our test passes. So we've We've we have smooshed um, we have smooshed our diffs, just to make sure that it's not some weird glitch. Uh, I'll I'll just like output container inner HTML, and you can see that uh, all the diffs are gone. <laughs> nice. So we can stop here, uh, but I actually wanted to dive into like how React actually works. So what we've established so far is that you can kind of uh, that React already implements uh, the ability to kind of skip over some nodes, and that's exactly what fragments are. Uh, but we probably also want to look at uh, how does React do that, and how we can kind of trick React uh, into, like, what if we implemented it in React itself? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, let me just move this somewhere. OK. So I'll remove my hack here. And the test fails again. And so uh, before we start, I want to give a quick uh, kind of introduction to how React works internally and why it works a certain way. Um, and so the Maybe it's easier if we just jump into code and you, you can ask questions and I'll just try to give you like a general sense. Uh, but what React is, uh, like the purpose of React is that uh, you sh we want to be able to, uh, like when we render something for the first time, uh, we create a, uh, a tree that you don't see. So you don't interact with that tree, it's like internal only. And that tree gives things a stable identity. So if we render, you know from React is that if you render something twice, like if you do like React on DOM that render again, it's not going to blow away the inputs or the state 
because React is going to compare the types of these things and be like, oh, this is still a div, so I don't need to do anything. And similarly, like when it sets state in a component, you shouldn't worry about uh, like all the things below disappearing. That's kind of the, the purpose of React. And the way it does that is, is that it creates a, uh, a tree uh, of internal objects uh, that represent, uh, F unlike elements, so this is JSX element, right? And like, this is JSX element. And so elements are created on every render. So this element tree, it gets created every time app is called. But inside React is keeping its own tree. Uh, we call it the fiber tree. Uh, so it's a tree of objects. Uh, and we compare, is the element type the same or not? And if it's the same, uh, then we don't actually modify the fiber tree or the DOM. And so this is roughly how it works. And so when you give an, uh, when you say tell React that there is, uh, there has been an update and like it needs to re-render uh, something, uh, React starts at the top. So it starts at the app. Um, and then it, uh, similar to how in JavaScript, when you debug things, you can, if you use the debugger, you know, you can step into a function and step out of a function. And like, if you keep stepping in, like you get deeper and deeper. And this is kind of how React also works is that it, uh, it steps into a, uh, like a fiber and uh, we call it beginning work on that fiber. So it's called begin work. And uh, it keeps stepping in until it has reached the fiber with no children. And this is when it completes it. So it says, okay, I have nothing to step into anymore. So uh, I complete that fiber. And so the, uh, it, uh, it keeps like entering until it reaches uh, completion. And then it begins this one, begins this one, begins this one completes this one, 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 completes this one. And so when it completes uh, the root one, it says, okay, I've completed all of them. I know everything that we need to render. And this is when I'm gonna flush changes to the DOM. So while it works, uh, like while it begins and completes these uh, fibers, it, it memorizes uh, what are the actual DOM mutation it wants to make. So like maybe it notices that uh, it needs to insert this whole tree. Maybe it notices that like if this tree already exists, maybe the text changes. So it records what changes need to be made. And then when we uh, complete uh, the root one, uh, this is where we commit. So this is where those changes are flushed to the DOM. Does that so make sense so far? So fiber is it's kind of like a piece of work, but like how, granular is it? Is it like a fiber says, create this element and then set these props? Or is it like a complete description of the element? So I think fiber is more like, uh, it's not, it's both description of work, but it's also, uh, it's just a node representing uh, like a persistent thing that's there. So like a fiber for this might look like type diff, and then like, it has a bunch of other properties. Uh, and it, it has a field called state node. That's, uh, that's the actual div element or whatever is called HTML div element. So it, it's where the state is kept. And like for class components, this is like their, their fiber is where the state is kept. Like for hooks also like a bit type dialog. And then if there were any like if this was a class component, then state node would be uh, your like dialog instance. Uh, and so th this is where they're kept. But uh, when we make changes, so like when the DOM updates, like maybe, a, and like even this, uh, so, well, if, there is, if it's a single text node, we actually keep it, we don't create an extra fiber for it as an optimization. Uh, but if those were like two separate text nodes, then there would be like type, I think now, uh, and uh, but so there is uh, there is a thing that lets you distinguish their types. It's called tag, not to be confused with HTML tags. Uh, tag just means like something that we tag it with, which represents what kind of fiber it is. Uh, so it's an enum. If you go to work tags 
it actually gives you all possible values. So these are all the different things that fiber could be. So there are fibers of function components, class components, uh, host components are like divs, B spans. So all the things that uh, t when you pass a string to create element, uh, the corresponding fiber will be a host component. Um, there is a, a type of fiber for fragment and for a bunch of stuff. Uh, and so, so um, if, if the unit of work only completes once we hit a leaf node that doesn't have any children, is it possible for us to accidentally create performance issues by just having like very deep trees of, of container elements that don't, don't, you know, get to a child node anytime soon? Uh, I'm not sure I understand about the any time soon. So there is like all of this code is very optimized. So usually we see like when we see performance problems, it's rarely in like React itself. It's usually just because like you do a bunch of work in like rendering methods and life cycles and they accumulate. But if you just like, if you compare a version where you have like a thousand div nesting versus a version where you don't, the one where you don't is gonna be faster because there's just less like iteration, less like less, uh, fixed over like there is some fixed overhead associated with each fiber uh it's not something to worry about like too much but it exists and so in general like especially in, if you get into like thousands of nodes uh if you can avoid like too many extra wrappers then it's better to avoid them uh, and that's also kind of how like hooks help optimize code sometimes it's just that if you had like 10 levels of some like consumers and stuff and then it became just one fiber that's uh, usually better. But we're also, we're not recreating fibers every single time, right? We are yeah, recreating exactly. create elements, but the fibers are getting reused, right? Yes, so uh, the way reuse works is, uh, it's kind of interesting and uh, I think it's pretty central to this. So I'll just, uh, don't get worried if you get lost a little bit, it's kind of confusing, uh, but I'll just draw a diagram of like what we actually do. Uh, it's not super important for like this particular smoosh mode, but uh, I'll, I'll just try to explain the overall flow of what happens. Um, can you, can I, yeah, okay. So. Um, uh, we can only see your code editor right now. Oh, okay, I forgot to, yeah, I need to unshare. Uh, I'm not sure how to do this. Oh, stop share, this is it. Okay, can you see me now? Yep. Okay, um, so is, can I see a circle? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, on the initial mount, when we, uh, when we mount for the first time, when we just create the tree, uh, and we have this like tree where you have like app, and then inside of it like model, and inside of it like maybe a div, so what we do is that we create the fiber structure that matches that element kind of tree. And if like model is a component that returns a div, we, uh, like we create a fiber for app and then we create a fiber for model. And then we call the render method. So we call the component. The component says, oh, I render this div. And so we create a fiber for that div uh, and create the actual div. So we keep a reference to like the actual div here. And uh, if we just do an update uh, that maybe changes the text of the div. So we could have mutated, uh, so because actually like we don't need to remove any nodes, right? So it's, it's, it's just an update. In theory, we could just walk down this tree and mutate it. Uh, uh, like directly, uh, which is how React worked before uh, React 16. So it used to actually mutate uh, the tree as it goes and like update the DOM at the same time. And there was only one tree at a given time. Uh, the problem with this approach though, is that a lot of things become impossible. So if you heard about uh, upcoming features like concurrent mode and suspense, uh, they kind of rely on being able to uh, start 
rendering and then interrupt it and do something else. It's like maybe you're scrolling feed and we start rendering the next uh, feed item of screen, but then you press like and we really want to stop whatever we're doing and just handle that like really fast and then maybe continue uh, like rendering whatever is off screen. So that's one example where you want to interrupt things. Another example is if you're on the feed page in a click profile, uh, you don't want to immediately replace the screen with a giant spinner. Ideally, you would want to start rendering that profile page somewhere in memory without like overriding the DOM. And then if it takes too long, then you show a spinner. But then if it's completed within like 200 milliseconds, you just show the whole page without this sharing like in between state. And for those things to work, uh, it doesn't work if you mutate the tree immediately as you go. So what we do is a similar technique uh, to uh, how, uh, how games are usually designed, uh, at least like in the past. I don't really know how it works anymore, but like in the past, the game designers had the same problem, uh, but on a lower level uh, where you would, uh, if you draw directly to, uh, to, the, to the graphics thing, whatever it is, like to the screen, I guess, uh, you're gonna have this weird issue where uh, you might see things, like you might perceive how uh, the bottom of the screen hasn't updated yet, but then the top of the screen, like those pixels have been pushed. And so what uh, gamed engines do is uh, they use a technique called double buffering. So instead of writing to the same place that's already on the screen, they write to a separate buffer and then when the buffer is completed, they just swap them. And th so this is kind of how React works, at least in like React 16 and onwards, is that we, uh, we actually create a copy of that fiber tree uh, when we start working on it. So you can imagine that there is uh, like another fiber for app. So this is when we do an update. We create another fiber for app, we create another fiber for model, we call the model rendering function, maybe it returns a div with another text inside of it, or maybe it returns a completely different tree, but like we keep working on the tree. And like, so we copy the things from the previous tree. So the div is already there, we don't need to recreate it, we just like update. We remember that we need to update it. Uh, and we mark uh, the fibers that need updates, so like there is a certain marker. And then when we complete the topmost one, that's when we know that uh, it's it, like the whole thing has, is ready. So this is when we, uh, we flush the changes from all fibers that have been marked as uh, having, we call that uh, an effect. So we have, uh, we remember which fibers have uh, effects attached to them. We commit all of those effects. And then uh, there is actually a, uh, an invisible fiber called root fiber. So you don't see it, but it's there for every root you create, like when you do react down the render. Uh, and there, it has a pointer to uh, the current version of the tree. So this pointer initially points here, but then when we complete the app, uh, we, we switch the pointer, so we say now this, is the current tree. So we don't actually need to traverse it at the time. We just say, once we have reached the completion, we say, now that make this, uh, this represents what's on the screen. And uh, it means that this copy can now be used as a draft or as we call it, work in progress. So this is why there is at most two versions of every fiber. Like in theory, like conceptually, you can think of this as every time we make a change, we create a new version. And like we, if something hasn't changed at all, so like maybe there is some, uh, maybe there is some pure component or like memoized component, I will call it M. So the cool thing about it is if we know when we re-render that it has bailed out, we can keep a reference to it. So we don't actually recreate the fibers unnecessarily. Uh, but then, uh, as an optimization, we keep, like as soon as some other tree becomes the current one, 
we reuse the other one as the next draft, and we just keep swapping them every time. And that's roughly like how uh, how the uh, like how this uh, how this works. And so the important part, like what this gives us, is that uh, we can start every time. Like we have the current tree, like maybe it represents our like current feed. And then if we start maybe rendering some new story item as a scroll, we can start doing that in the work in progress copy. But then it can get interrupted and we can like completely ignore all of that. Let's say we want to handle leak like instead. And so we again start from the top, but this time we render the like, we complete it, we swap trees, and then we can resume the work on that other update. So what this buys us is just the ability to throw away the work without worrying that we've already mutated the DOM in a way that we can't recover from. So that's, that's what motivates uh, this kind of architecture. And so what we're going to look at is uh, the, uh, the process of like going into a node. So that's, that's the begin phase. Then the process of kind of going out of a node, that's the complete phase. And finally, the moment when we when we are ready to commit changes and switch the pointers, that's the commit phase. So it's three phases. The begin is when we enter, complete as we go upwards, and commit is when we go through all things that we tag as needing some DOM mutations or lifecycle calls and actually flush on those changes to the DOM. Any questions about this part so far? It's super cool. Uh, one thing I was wondering, uh, I know recently there's a few of the React-like frameworks like Preact and HyperApp have also implemented Suspense. Um, do, have they basically copied the same mechanism or do they implement Suspense differently? No, I haven't seen. Uh, there, might be some, there are some learning experiments that implemented a similar mechanism. Um, but as far as I know, in, even in Preact text, Suspense is uh, first of all, I think it only works for initial mount. I don't think it works for updates yet. And also it doesn't do any of those things. So like it shows, that's, that's why it shows the loading indicator immediately. Um, so it can't delay showing it because it would need two trees in order to do that. Um, and like even React in, uh, in the sync mode, the way you use it today, it also, um, like it also doesn't, like it still flushes mutation synchronously. So this architecture doesn't buy you much in the synchronous mode. However, it enables concurrent mode. So in concurrent mode, we can actually start working on the suspended tree, but like not flush it immediately. That's like the whole point of concurrent mode. And that's what we're actively working on. Cool. All right. Uh, Shall we get into code or any more questions? Let's go back to the code. Okay, let's go to the code. Uh, so uh, let me share my screen again. All right. So let's see how we can do uh, the same thing, but oh, oh, oops, one, one second. Uh, let me move this somewhere. Yeah, so let's, let's see how we can do the same thing, uh, but in the reconciler. So the part that actually deals uh, with fibers and beginning and completion. And just to kind of uh, prove that like I, I wasn't lying to you, I'll actually, um, I will actually add some console logs and we will see uh, the begin and complete and all, all this kind of stuff. So uh, I usually start by opening up uh, React Fiber begin work. So the way this uh, the way the source is structured is a little bit unusual. So you might be used to thinking, oh, there's probably a file for functional components, a file for class components, a file for suspense, but we actually structure it uh, by the phase because it's really important that in particular phase you're allowed to do particular things. And really a lot of, uh, a lot of logic is similar dependent on the phase. 
So instead, it's like it's it's split by time. So there is the fiber begin work, there is fiber complete work, and there is fiber commit work. And those are three central files in the code base. So they're inside Re React Reconciler, SRC, uh, fiber begin, complete, commit. Uh, and so these, uh, these files, they're pretty long. So uh, that's standard in <laughs> React code base. And the way they're long is just because we've been burned in the past by uh, over abstracting things where like you have like a uh, hundred small modules and have no idea how they relate to each other. So we try to avoid that. And instead, if you understand the architecture, you know, okay, like if this code runs in begin phase, then I'll just go to begin work and I'll just find, uh, yeah. So it's, it's pretty long to scroll through, but if you, uh, if you look for begin work, that's the entry point of that module. And so it runs every fiber goes through here and it, it, you can see the current is whatever is on the screen. So it's the current version. And the work in progress is the draft version that we can mutate. So we should never mutate current uh, during begin work, but it exists for the purpose of mutating work in progress. And you can see that uh, if you scroll a little bit, uh, so it, it has a bunch of, uh, so these are bailouts, these are, for cases when we want to skip over some nodes. So there isn't much logic here. It's like for cases when we go from the top, but we don't actually have any updates scheduled. Um, so these aren't very interesting, but this is the meat of this function. You can see it says, depending on the tag, do different things. And it's like, is this a function component? Well, let's do something with the function component. Is that a class component? Well, let's do something with a class component. Is that a host component, which is like a div? Let's do something with a host component. Is that a, um, there should be a fragment somewhere here. Let's do something with a fragment. Dan, have you recreated Redux inside the React code base? It's not me, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really nice though, because it, it avoids, uh, it's like it avoids dynamic dispatch, so the way you might want to implement this instead is like you would have a class for every one of those and that class would have some method uh, that is like begin and you would call like instance.begin. So that's how React was implemented before 16, uh, but it actually made some features like fragments super difficult because they don't neatly fit into this pattern. And we found that actually collocating all this code and just uh, tweaking what each of those do and having them mutate the same exact data structure is actually way more flexible and allows to implement all these cool features. Um, so let's, just to prove that this is actually how it works, I'm just going to put a lock here. So I'll say uh, begin work on and then work in progress dot type. And in complete work, I'll find uh, complete work so this is a, a method that we call as we go upwards. So when we've completed all, like when we've, we don't have anywhere down to go, we start going upwards. So this is where complete work is called. And uh, as you can see, complete work doesn't do much. So it's, well, it's, it's still a long method, but like compared to the begin work, uh, it like most of those, you can see that it's just like conscious consumer, nothing to do, memo component, nothing to do. And so in many cases, uh, like the, the complete phase is not, is not very interesting. Uh, so we're gonna put a log here just to verify that we actually hit it. So complete work on work in progress type. Um, and we'll also go to commit work. So commit work is the one where we actually make changes to the DOM. So in begin and complete, we remember we, what we touched and in commit work, we flush those changes. So there is commit work, and I will add a log commit work on finished work dot type. Let's see what we what do we have here. Okay, the logs are kind of one key for uh, for function components. Uh, because they serialize, like type is a function, so it serializes the function. But you can see that, uh, see, so 
looking at our test, uh, maybe we can start with a simpler example where it's just uh, say a bunch of divs. So in that case, you can see begin work on uh, null. So the root fiber, that's the one I talked about at the very top, it has a null type because like it doesn't need a type. Um, then it begins work on app, which is because like that's the thing that we rendered. So it always starts from the very top. Even if you do a set state deep in the middle, it starts from the top. It just keeps over things that haven't updated, which is for like really fast. Uh, so it avoids going into trees that don't have any updates scheduled on them. Uh, but it's still like if there is something scheduled, is it will go and jump over those things. So it begins now, begins app, begins div, 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 and then it completes. So it reaches the the inner one. And it says, okay, complete this, complete the one above it, complete the one above it, complete app, complete root. And there is nothing to commit because, uh, well, I would expect it to actually commit uh, the, like the insertion of divs. I guess it's just not commit work, but commit mount or something like this. Let me see, um, there's a few, yeah, there's a few functions uh, that are exported from here. Commit life cycles. Uh, anyway, we, we can get to that a bit later. Look at this one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll need to look at the code in more detail. But anyway, that's that's not the part that's uh, that like we want to implement uh, so that the divs uh, are handled the same way as uh, as the fragments. So let's see uh, what does, uh, let, let's change the test back to have all this, all this stuff in it. Um, so we can see it starts work on app, div, 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 completes a bunch of divs, then begins the dialog because the dialog is after divs. Uh, completes divs, begins on P, completes, and goes into button, exits the button, exits the divs, exits the dialog, exits the app, uh, and gets to the top. So uh, let's see what does it actually do for those different types of things. Um, so let's go to, so there are two types, uh, two tags that we are interested in. One is host components, which is divs, and another one is fragments. So we can see what does React actually do for fragments. So uh, let's search for case uh, case fragment. So this is where it starts. This is our main switch. And for fragments, it calls update fragment. So let's see what that does. And it doesn't actually do much. So it what it says is like reconcile children. That just means that um, figure out what are the next thing to go into. Because fragment doesn't have any anything associated with it. So it just looks at what are the latest props that were queued and go uh, and like figure out, set up the fiber for the child if it's not there already, so we can go into that fiber. And to prove that we can actually change. Um, so if we, let's say we use the fragment Let's say um, I made that React that fragment. Uh, it still does a bunch of stuff, um, but if we changed it instead of real children, uh, we replaced it with something. That didn't work. Uh, I'm not sure why that didn't work. I would expect it to work. Do we have any fragments in the code right now? I think I put one here. Oh yeah, you did. Uh, let's let's just try it. Throw in. It seems like this code doesn't even work. Uh, like it doesn't even get run. Uh, update fragment case fragment. Maybe we bail out earlier as an optimization because I'm not sure why. 
we definitely begin work on fragment, right? So uh, it's app. Oh, we skip over it because it's, yeah, so we have an optimization, I think, uh, that we skip over fragments uh, that are, like if there is just one fragment, uh, because it just has like this child, we just skip over to that child directly. But I think if we keep adding more fragments, we're gonna disable that optimization. So uh, we, act, we will actually force it to create the fiber fragment. Uh, yes, that's, that's how it works. So this is another optimization we do is just like, if, if you ha just have one fragment returned from fiber, we're gonna use that fragment. Like we're not gonna create a fiber for it because that, that will be uh, unnecessary. So, um, right, so now it, it goes into my throw, new error, no. That's how I debug React. I just throw errors all, all over the place. And now if, uh, yeah, so you can see now that, uh, now that I say, uh, whenever you go in, begin work on fragment, instead of the real children, which are stored in pendant props, uh, you will just like use these fake children. And now you can see that my whole app was replaced by uh, by these fake children. So if I fix it, uh, if I fix it back, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, that's 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 the real thing. And so we want to look at uh, how is uh, update host component different from update fragment. So I'll just copy and paste this uh, in a split screen so we can compare. Um, this is what the this is what the fragment does. And then update host components is the thing that, that's used for the div and like any, uh, like P and any HTML tag. So it has some logic host context. That's the thing used for SVGs. We don't care about that. I'll just delete the, the stuff that we don't care about so it doesn't confuse us. Uh, this is about hydration from server side. So if, it's, if there is already a div it's going to like consume it instead of uh, reattaching it. So we don't do server side rendering in this example. I'll just delete this. And then it says, like, it looks at the props. It looks whether there is like a text child because it has some special logic related to it, uh, whether it needs to clear the text if you like, if you had a text, but now you have a div child. So it's going to clear the text in this case. It remembers to call a ref if you had a ref on it. Uh, some stuff for concurrent mode. And then it does the same thing. So actually there is not much difference with what the fragment does. There is some special logic for like refs, but we don't care about this for now. There is some special logic for, uh, for text children, like div and text inside of it. Uh, but let's say we don't care about that for now either. And so it actually ends up like really, really similar. So this is interesting. So update host component actually doesn't like, I wonder if we can just like copy and paste the fragment implementation. If that's, if that's still objects are not valid. Yeah, so the props the props are probably in a different format. Uh, here it's, yeah, so it's not just for, for the fragment, the, the children of the fragments are the props themselves. For some reason, I don't remember why it's done this way, probably because it just doesn't have a type or like, uh, or like it, it doesn't have properties, real properties. But of course for divs, we want to read props.children. So uh, if we replace this all with next children is pending props that children that's that should work. Okay, so we still have the divs. So this tells us that the difference is not in the begin phase. The begin phase is actually pretty similar for them. So let's look at what happens in the complete phase. So the complete phase is when we go upwards, when we've already created all the children, and then we're like, okay, time to go back up. And so here, if we look at, so here the, the components, then they don't actually do anything. So like you can see we step out of function component 
And we're like, yeah, whatever, let's just go upwards because we already rendered it. So there's nothing interesting in there. Um, but if we go to host component, there is a lot of stuff happening here. So this is because if we created a node, like at the like when we get to the bottom, we're like, oh, here's a div. We need to create a div, like a node for it, a real div. And then as we go upwards, like maybe we we have another like uh, section element or something like this. And we somehow need to connect them to each other, right? Because like otherwise that diff is just like gonna float in the space. Uh, we need to connect it to its parent. And so what happens is that as we go upwards, we create the elements, the actual div elements, and then we connect them to whatever is what, whatever elements we had below. Uh, so like the the other things we just completed. So we build up the tree like more and more as we just go upwards. And you can see that's that's what's happening here. Uh, so I'll I'll remove this. Uh, so for host component, we pop the context, which is like a SVG thing. Uh, it doesn't matter here. So if current is not null and the state node exists, state node is going to be that uh, that div basically. So if this this says if this is an update. So if current is not null, it means the current tree already exists and it has a diff of like whatever it is in there. So this is the update path. So it means that this is the case where it already is there and we just want to update that diff to like change its properties or whatever. So we just remember to like update host component and if it has a ref, do something. Otherwise, this is a new mount. So otherwise, this is the case where we uh, complete it for the first time and we need to create the div. And so it says, oh, we got to have props because like without props, we wouldn't be able to do that. So I don't care about that. Um, host context doesn't really matter here. It's, uh, it's for SVG stuff, uh, but we can ignore it. So the hydration is related to uh, hydrating from server side markup, and we're not doing that. So I'll just I'll just delete it. And finally, this is the this is the actual like this is where we create the div. So if this is an update, do something. Otherwise, we're creating for the first time. Let's create the div. And so this is gonna call into React DOM and actually like make a div element. So if you console.log state node, we're gonna call it state node. That's how we like, that's how we call data associated with the fiber and for host components, it's the actual divs. And so if we scroll down, we see begin work, blah, 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 blah. And then we say complete work on div. And here's the HTML div element. So that's an actual div that React just created. And it doesn't have any children or like it's not connected to anything. It's just, we just barely made it. And now it says append all children to that div. So let's just comment this out and see what happens. I'm not actually sure. Um, so I'll just scroll past all the logs and you can see received div div, like opening and closing divs. So what happened here? Uh, I have these two fragments, and then inside of those fragments, I have a div with something, and like um, dialogue. So I'm not sure why there are two, uh, but that's, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I'm following why that happened. But the, uh, let me go back here. The idea is that append all children is the thing that connects them to their parents. So it's like uh, when we created a div and then we're like, what, is, what are the things we already just completed so we can connect them together? So if we go into that, uh, that definition, it's here. And so this is a scary looking loop, uh, but it's just something you get used to. You'll see a lot of those in React code base. They all look pretty much exactly the same. Uh, if it makes it look better, you can think like the recursive version would be something like 
uh, function do something fiber, like do something, and then it would be like if fiber child do something with child, if fiber sibling do something with sibling. And then the actual do something is like uh, do stuff depending on fiber type. So this is the, the general pattern. It's just we write it as a while loop for performance because we don't actually need to like to to spend all this stack uh, like to allocate the stacks for recursive calls because we can all, always traverse fibers upwards as well. So we write it as a while loop. Uh, but in essence, it is just a way to traverse children and maybe in some cases, uh, like not traverse deeper. So what specifically we're trying to do here is we're trying to, for a fiber that just completed, so like maybe a model or like, no, I guess it's, it's, it's only relevant for divs. So like for some div, we're trying to find the closest divs below it and add them as children to that div, like collect them. So you can see that it, it goes over each node. Uh, it, uh, it recurses here, so it goes into children, like to skip over custom components. Uh, and it goes into siblings as well to kind of check all of them. And then finally, when it meets a host component or a host text, which is like the div or a text node, it attaches it to the, uh, to the div that, or like the, the node that we just created. So this is the thing that connects them together. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I'm starting to regret that we took this path. I should have just remove those divs from the file and gone home. But we uh, fragments. Yeah, we're pretty close. Um, <laughs> so when you say that you're connecting them, like what exactly does that mean? Are you connecting them like you're in the fiber you're making that connection? No, no. So it's just essentially a parent dot append child. Okay, so we're literally doing the DOM connection yes, here. It's okay. just it's just doing the DOM. Cool. It's it's like it has a different name because it depends on environments. Like React Native would do it differently and so on. But like in the in the React DOM implementation, if you open DOM host config, which is where mm -hmm. all this implementation lies, you can see that it's literally parent dot append child child, and that will get inlined by a Google Closure compiler. So it would like in the in the compiled production version, it will literally be this call. Okay. And so uh, for React Native, does that just generate then the, the, the instructions to be sent over the bridge to the native yeah. side? Yeah. Yeah. It's different in, uh, in Fabric. Uh, so Fabric uh, is a rewrite of React Native that doesn't use mutation. It instead uses persistent data structures. Uh, and that's why you might have noticed it says, if supports mutation, then it adds children this way. Otherwise, persistent host tree mode this is where the implementation is different. It just clones everything above it and like then swaps out uh, the container or something like this. Um, yeah, yeah, it just like it clones the tree. That's very cool. Yeah, I think sometimes I forget that Fiber is meant for other renderers too and I just think about the DOM, but everything yeah. that we're doing in here also is gonna work for other renderers. Yeah, but I, I, one thing I want to push back a little bit against is like sometimes people use that to say, oh, React is like such a layer of abstraction between the DOM and it's not like close to metal. Uh, but like all this stuff goes away. It's like Google Closure Compiler is going to say, oh, like this supports mutation thing is constant. So I'm just going to use that function and then it will inline the actual implementation right into it. And like it will probably inline this function to where it's called. So the result is like highly optimized specifically for the DOM and like the same for React Native and so on. So we use the build process to do that. Um, anyway, what we wanted to do is that if we wanted to skip over uh, the divs, right? So let's see, uh, let's see how we could do that. So first of all, let's see where we append. I'm just trying to get back to where I was. Uh, update host component, where is it called? Okay, yeah, so I was here. So 
we create an instance and then we append all children. So one thing we could do is we can still create instances for those divs. I'm not sure if it's like if any other parts of the code make an assumption that like instances exist. So I'll just start with uh, what if we could change append all children to kind of skip the divs. So it would just, even if it sees a div, it would still go into it and search for other things. So when connecting them together, it would just like connect them, not to divs. Uh, so I'll go back to append all children. And say, if node tag is host component, this is where it decides to add it to the DOM, but I'll say, and it's not a div. So let's see how that works out. This is interesting. It's not exactly what I hoped for. Uh, let's just get rid of those fragments for now because they're, they're confusing me a little bit. Okay, so we, have a, we still have a root div here because this is the one that was appended to the to the root container. So we didn't actually get rid of it, like we didn't skip over it because the logic that skips over it is only for when we complete and like we attach children. Uh, but this is the one that's actually like at the top and it's attached, uh, is it, the one that we add to the, uh, to the root DOM element. But we're already pretty close. You can see that the thing that we want is like it's, it's, right, uh, it's right inside here. So um, let's see if we can get rid of this diff as well. So let's go back to complete work. So what if we just don't create it? I wanna see what happens if I, so we still, currently we still create all those divs, we just skip over the ones that we don't want. Um, so let's, let's go back to complete work and this is where we create the instance and append all children. So what if we say else if uh, type is not div, then create an instance, otherwise don't create it at all. So in this case, this, this state node is gonna stay null. Uh, so it's, it's, we're not gonna even create those, uh, those bad divs. So the test fails, it says fail to execute append child on node. Parameter one is not on type of type node. This is a, an error from like from the from the DOM engine. It means that we call depend child with something that is like null probably. And if you look at where it happens, you can see it happens in commit mutation effects. So this is where we actually make those changes to the DOM. This is the commit phase. Uh, the distinction is that the reason we could do this append child in the complete phase before is because that tree is entirely new, it's disconnected. So it's safe to mutate it because like nobody sees it. It's a new thing that we're creating as we go. But any other mutations like uh, replacing something in the DOM that's like visible, it happens in the commit phase. And so this is why the root diff is actually replaced at the, uh, at the very end when we've completed everything, we have walked up the tree, and now we're ready to commit effects. So effects are things that actually mutate the DOM. And so the placement effect is the effect, it's insertion basically, it's when we want to insert uh, that thing into the DOM. And so it tries to append child the container, which means append uh, the, to the root container that you pass the React DOM that render. And then uh, let's, see, let's see how that's implemented. So commit placement in the React Fiber commit work. Commit placement. So it tries to look uh, where to insert uh, our, uh, our DOM tree. And in this case, we insert it into the root. It's like the root component. So it will read it from the, uh, from this is the thing that we pass to React DOM that renders, like React DOM render app container, so this, this is the container that it will find. 
And then it does a, another one of those loops where it's like, okay, what are all the things, all the closest things that I need to insert into it? So it searches for like the closest elements in the era of Hava tree. Uh, like they might themselves be deep trees that have already been created, but we just need to find the closest ones and attach it to the actual DOM. And so this is where it kind of skips over some of them, but like uh, tries to insert them in the right place or append them in the right place. Uh, and this is where all the, like, all the attachment happens. And so what we want to say is that currently it says if the, ho if the node tag is host component, uh, then like it, it wants to stop here and attach those. And so this is where that div at the root is coming from. Uh, but we're gonna say, unless it's a div, in which case, uh, don't bother. Uh, because the state node is null, we didn't actually create that div, we skipped over it. Uh, so we say if, if node type is host component and it's not a div, uh, then insert it. And it has passed. So we can see that it still begins work on all those divs. It completes work on this stuff. And then eventually it completes work on the whole document. And we can verify also here we can say, um, so I can move this condition in complete work. I move to complete work that conditionally creates a div. So I can move this behind the if here and say it's a div, so I won't create it. And if it's not a div, um, I will add it's a uh, work in progress type, so I will create it. Uh, Oops, I messed up something in the syntax. I'm so bad at JavaScript. If type, where is the engine? Oh, this is where the else should have been. So you can see uh, now it says begin work, complete work on div, and it's like, it's a div, so, oh, it's a, if it's not a div, Okay, I messed this up. If it's not a div, then I will create the node, otherwise I will not create it. And so we can see we begin work, we complete work on div, but we don't create the state node for it. Again, don't create the state node, blah, blah, blah. But then we begin work on P, uh, complete work on P, and it says it's a P, so I will create that. And then eventually, in the uh, when it appends the children, it will skip over those fibers that have the div type, so it won't like it will go into them and find the non-div children. And similarly, when it attaches them to the root node in the commit phase, it will skip over the div fibers and find uh, find the like the the children that we care about. And I'll just remove all logs now. Uh, And I just want to see the beautiful pass and test. Beautiful. And let me just log it to verify that it actually does the thing that I want. Yeah, so this is the React uh, smush mode. All right, dip it. That is, that is nice. I, I can't even, I, I was fairly familiar in the dark old days of the, of the stack-based reconciler and I couldn't even think how you would do something like this over there. I think this is uh, super cool how flexible it is to be able to kind of separate the, the effects and the actual work being done. Yeah, I do think that th this is an example of something that would be like pretty difficult with, uh, with stack-based approach, which is also like why I think it was like Preact team basically rewrote Preact to support fragments uh, in part because if your architecture like doesn't allow for this kind of stuff, it's just very difficult to implement. But then if you just operate on the data structures, uh, you have a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. So 
I wanted to do one extra thing. Uh, I, I don't know if you feel like we have time for it, but I wanted to actually turn it into a mode so, so that you can like put smush mode around those components and only do that if the smush mode is on. Is everyone on board with that? You can go for it. Okay, yeah, let's try it. So what I wanna, um, I'll change my test a little bit. Um, so I want to, I want to make it so that only, let's see. So I want to make it so that uh, I can still have some diffs in my app if I really need to. But then I can activate the smush mode and the things inside the smush mode would not, uh, would, would not have, uh, would not have diffs. It just, uh, I'll write the test, basically just copy paste in this. And then things, things inside here won't have divs. And then things outside will have divs. So the first thing it says, I'm not, I, I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know if that will work out. <laughs> uh, and I'm also not super familiar with how modes work. But let's give it a try. So it says create element type is undefined because there is no such thing as React Smush mode. Uh, but I'll go to React.js and I'll add it. So there is this uh, street mode. It's like a, a symbol. I'll just add Smush mode. And I'll just use symbol for, I'll call it React Smush. Okay, so now it says type is invalid, but got symbol. Uh, I guess it validates if if those are valid. Uh, like I guess it has a whitelist. So if I go to element validator, this is where it decides what is valid and what is invalid. Um, let's see where. Does it say something about strict mode? No, it doesn't. Uh, is valid element type, where is that coming from? Okay, that's the thing that validates whether it's one of those good types that we support. Uh, and it has strict mode type here. So I'll just say if type is smush, then you're also good. Okay, now it just says that it doesn't know what to do with that smush mode. So it's, you can see when it creates a fiber from type and props, it's like, what the hell is this type? I don't, I don't support that. So let's go to reactfiber.js. Uh, create fiber from type and props. This is the one. And so here's a switch statement where it's like, oh, is this like this fiber or is it like that fiber? or whatever and like is, is gonna create different types of fibers with different tags. So I just want to add another mode here. So I'll say if it's, uh, if it's that thing that I copy pasted, React Smush, uh, then it's gonna be a mode. So we already have the strict mode and I'll just build on top of the same, uh, the same machinery. And then I do a bitwise mask saying, I want to add smoosh mode to this. So this is gonna be like a bit mask. Uh, I have, it's imported here, type of mode. So I'll add smoosh mode here. Uh, and this will be a number. Uh, so these are different modes that we have. Some of them are exposed, some of them are not exposed. Uh, I'll add one more. Uh, so I'll just add one more zero. That makes it uh, a new value in the bitmask. So this should create a mode fiber with a tag of mode. Okay, so now it, at least it doesn't crash, right? So this is, this is already better. 
So the way modes work is just there is a mode fiber at the top. And then whenever a fiber is created, uh, I can search for mode to see where that happens. So wherever we create new fibers, we copy this mode field, which is a number that represents all modes that are active for this fiber. It is copied from its parent. Uh, the return thing is it's what we call the parent because we return to it as we go upwards. So this means that like if there is a mode at the top, then all fibers below are actually gonna get this mode as a mode property, which is really handy because it means we can check it anytime. So we can go back to where we forked. Uh, so here we, we forked the code depending on whether it's a div or not. And let's just see if we can see uh, the mode here. Forked properties dot mode. So it says 16, it says zero for some of them and it says 16 for other ones. And 16 is actually the mode that I just added. So in uh, React type of mode, wherever that was, uh, yeah, this one. So this is the bit mask and 16 is the value I gave to smush mode. Um, so I'll just, okay, I'll just import it. So I'll go here and I'll import import smush mode from uh, from shared whatever this is called react type of mode react type of mode um, so there are two places where we have the special logic for divs uh, one is here and another one is uh, in complete work below Let's see, I'm just trying to, f oh, this is, sorry, this is, the, this is the wrong file. This is the commit phase. Um, so I want to import it in the, yeah, so this is where I want to import it. So I import the smush mode and then um, there are two places with special logic in the all children and here. So here we decide whether to even create a div. And so we'll say if type is not div, or it may be a div if we're outside of smush mode. So I can say if work in progress dot mode and smush mode is not equal to smush mode. That's how you check a bit mask, a bit mask in JavaScript. It's kind of weird, but computer science, um, that's how it works. And then uh, the other place where we compared them was, um, was here. So if, if it's either not div, and sorry for my <laughs> formatting, it's, uh, I should like extract it to variable or something, but if it's not div or it's fine if it's a div, if, it's, if we are not in smush mode, then, then we should be good. And I made the mistake type of mode maybe what is what is type of react type of mode in oh it's in the same folder um type of mode oh i already have this import here so i can just do this mm, that didn't really work I wonder why. Uh, so as I said, I haven't really tried it. So maybe this wouldn't work. I just want to make one more change to see if maybe this is because we're in the commit path instead of this one. So this is like this. Maybe my check is wrong. So I don't want to spend too much time on this, but maybe one more minute. Um, no type is div.
Yeah, I'm not sure why this doesn't work. Anyway, I tried. Uh, I could probably figure it, figure it out, but yeah. Come on, gang. We can solve this. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't know if we can. I'm I'm trying to uh, trying to debunk. No, we should we should be able to. Uh, let me let me just. Uh, so I haven't tried this before, so and like I haven't really worked with modes, uh, so I don't have a clear intuition around these things. Um, so one thing we should okay, let's let's just think logically. Uh, so I'll like, remove this annoying assertion, and I'll just log, uh, and I'll remove the logs from here, and I'll just log the result, and. First of all, like how, how do we debug this? So let's see if we remove smoosh mode. We expect diffs to be respected, right? But they're not. So this is a bug. Uh, we know that the thing that decides whether to, um, there are two decision points, right? So like one of them is here, in the bundle children. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this really bad code into. Didn't we already ma make a modification also in the commit phase? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's relevant because it, it only affects the top level one. Mm. Uh, we oh, actually it might be irrelevant because it skips over all of them. Mm. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. So let's, uh, Let's see if if undoing the modification, the commit phase is going to fix it. So uh, if okay, so this gives us all the divs. So if we make the same check here. So if it's not div or if it's uh, if it's a div, it better be in the smoosh mode. And I'll need to import smoosh mode. So it's either not a div, in that case it's good, or it's a div but it's not in smoosh mode, and then smoosh mode is uh, what is smoosh mode? Smish mode is React type of mode. Um, I, oh, okay, I don't have that import, so I'll copy and paste this here. Okay, so what we expect here is that uh, it's not in smush mode, therefore I should see all the diffs, right? Is that what I expect here? And then if I wrap it in smush mode, I don't see the diffs. So I think it works. Uh, let, let's let's just remove the extra ones because they, they're just confusing me. Uh, so I think this is what we had. Div, div, extra div. So the, it, it seems like the reason extra div yeah, you just removed one, so I think this is I, good. I think it's just a test that's wrong. You have oh, uh, one yeah. fewer div, yeah. Yeah, it's it's an exit test in the div. See? Yeah, so it's we implemented this. Thank you for cheering. Yeah. Slow clap. Okay, <laughs> so there is one more thing that has nothing to do with this that I just wanted to show for fun. Uh, which is like, how would that actually feel in an application? Um, so we're not gonna like do anything with the recon. Like this is a cool approach for like showing how how you can kind of affect the reconciler and how you can make your own modes and well, if you fork React. Uh, but uh, the first, you know, remember the first approach that I showed where I just like overrode create element to like to do that. Um, where is React element? So in the very beginning, I overrode it to uh, to do this. So let's see how that how it feels <laughs> on Twitter. So we're gonna smoosh Twitter now. Um, 
So let's go to uh, Twitter. And so how do we smush it? So first of all, we need access to the, uh, to the React, uh, React instance, uh, to the like React module, which like if you try to do like React, then, uh, oh, yeah. So if you try to like write React, there is no React global and like there is no require, so you're not gonna find it this way. But one way you can find it is by using React DevTools. So React DevTools creates this hook, which is not to anything to do with like React hooks, it's just like uh, an object. And so React DevTools, React DOM will inject itself into that object and React DevTools will like, that's object created by React DevTools. And so we can actually find React here. So if we go to, well, not React, we can find React DOM. If we go to renders, blah, 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 value. And so these are things, inject, these are functions from React DOM injected by it. And we can right click and go to show function definition and that and pre the print it. So this gives us uh, some React DOM code. So we know in which file React DOM code is. And now we can search for create element because there's probably, okay, there is some create element call here in the same bundle. We just need access, like this is obviously React. So I'm, I'll just set a breakpoint here and refresh it. And now a.default is React. So I'm gonna say uh, React is a.default. And then let's, uh, let's override it. So uh, did it actually work? Yeah, React. Well, I don't know why the, the console is being wonky, but so I want to store the old create element. So that's react.createElement, that's the real one. And then I want to overwrite react.createElement to do that thing where it takes the type and a bunch of arcs, it returns old create element with types and the type and the same arcs. But if type is a diff, we're gonna assign it to symbol for React Fragment. And then let's see if Twitter can run. Oh no, it did it crash or? Hmm, it definitely worked for me. Maybe I need to like run it first and then do this after it has run. So let, let's see. Because I, I already tried it and I, I thought that this was working. Wait, we just called you. How did you know that we would have this problem? <laughs> it's time travel, man. Is this the time traveling debugger we've been hearing about? Yes. Oh. Okay, so let, let's just, let's make it run first and then do that thing. Uh, oh, I forgot to define it, sorry. Uh, Another try, react a default, then let's run it. And then let's, uh, let me just copy and paste this into one snippet. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm, no, this is good. This is what all hacking scene is, scenes in movies should look like anyway. <laughs> Just yeah, like yeah. 30 minutes of banging your head against the wall. I'm pretty sure this should work. Okay, let's continue. Now we do this. Yes, we smushed Twitter. <laughs> it looks great. Let's, let's see how Sorry, we, no, you didn't do anything wrong, Twitter. It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's all, it's all new. I like how Twitter takes the blame for this. Sorry, we did something wrong. No, I, I, I think, I think Dan did something wrong. It's, can't really blame Twitter for this. <laughs> so one thing that I want to emphasize though, which is, isn't it pretty amazing that it kind of works? Because like, it means that, uh, 
like as long as you don't use refs, for example, or like you don't overuse them, it's like the fact that the abstraction is declarative means that the components themselves keep working even though the underlying implementation of like what the like what React actually does to like change like the way it flushes changes to the DOM is completely different, but it's like it's pretty close. So yeah. So what's very interesting about this for me is, uh, at least in the days of yore, when I worked a lot with React Native Android, um, there was this problem where like a lot of container views would cause uh, performance problems for, for the Android uh, runtime. So there was this hacky way that you would collapse views by basically if they didn't have anything but layout props, you could do that. I mean, now you could build that for the web in yeah, the Yeah, so that's right exactly way. how React, that's what React Native does. So React Native has a, uh, has a process, even though React does send commands for those views, React Native is like, oh, this is a layout only view. So I'm gonna optimize it away. So I think it does that for, uh, for Android. I'm not sure if it does that for iOS. Uh, but yeah, and it, it would definitely be interesting to explore the implications uh, of like something like this on the web, like not in this form, obviously, but uh, like for many cases, if if there is more control or like declarative layout, uh, then we should be able to, uh, to, and like if there is an API, like a styling API that is, uh, that gives React more knowledge about what's actually happening, uh, then this should give React the power to like eliminate unnecessary nodes. So this is something we might explore in the future, uh, like for reals. <laughs> it's, it's quite impressive how the React Reconciler is so flexible that there's only three places that need to change for this to happen without hacking create element. Yeah, it's, it, it is interesting. And that those changes were like, like two line changes. <laughs> so, so where do you feel like, like React and Fiber is going? Because I feel like right now it's been a big massive rewrite and I'm sure that you're, you're getting sick of it. You'll be working on it for a long time. <laughs> like when, when do you feel like um, that we, we really get to see like one of the benefits? Uh, is it when concurrent mode becomes stable? Or? Yeah, so like the rewrite itself happened a few years ago. So it, it hasn't really changed that much since then. Like this, uh, this structure of like begin, complete, commit is so pretty stable. And uh, like we've been using that for a long time. The parts that do change are related to scheduling mostly. So like the thing that actually calls begin, complete, and commit and decides when to call it. And also the parts are related to uh, like, um, how do we, like, is it, we'd like to be able to resume work. So it will be an important optimization. Currently, we always start from the top, which means, well, like if we got interrupted and nothing happened in, in the middle, like maybe with some CSS animation, we let the browser do it, but then we come back in concurrent mode, we can resume from where we were. But if you like, if you have like, a, if you start rendering feed story, then I press like, we throw away that feed story and whatever like we created, and then later we try again. So an important optimization will be to try to actually, uh, if the like happened somewhere that didn't intersect with that feed story, is to pick up the work that we already started instead of like starting always from the top. And that will require some changes to the way we currently, like the way uh, the reuse works here. So we would have to be able to like reuse, uh, like stash away work somewhere and then somehow like join it. Um, uh, so that, that's one change, but that's kind of internal. Probably it, most people don't care about this, except that like when we actually implement this, it will allow like both time slicing and suspense to be like even faster because we won't have to retry things that we've already done but thrown away. Uh, but just in terms of user experience, I think uh, like we're working actively on suspense and concurrent mode and getting those two to like really work well together. And there are still some things that we need to like figure out with how to express it in terms of API so that it feels more or less intuitive um, and how common patterns like pagination and refaction and mutations, how they work in the different world. Um, but I think it is fascinating, like the way, uh, like if you, if you try to, uh, like a, 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 as an example, uh, I'll just show a small, uh, like a small GIF from a one of recent threads. Uh, 
so there is this uh, pull request by Sebastian that added the experimental API. Again, this is like disabled by default. Nobody, uh, it will be like unstable dash, dash something. Uh, but this is the thing that lets you, uh, that would let you like in sus when suspense is ready and like we'll document it, we'll change the API, don't, don't pay too much attention to it. Uh, but this is the thing that will allow you to, uh, to say, I want this update that might need the asynchronous data uh, to like not flip to spinner immediately, but wait instead. Uh, and, oh, I guess I, I don't have a GIF here. I'm sorry, but like, if you feel interested, you can, uh, you can check out this, uh, you can check out this, this PR and build it locally and try the GIST uh, that, that I showed. And it's, it's really interesting. It like, it shows you how, like you can set the state uh, to like update whatever like page you're on, but then that state might need some asynchronous data and it gives a really nice API to keep showing the old data for a while and then, but then maybe like gray it out or like somehow display to the user that it's not, uh, it's not necessarily fresh. And then when the fresh data is ready, uh, like you just show fresh data and React manages all of that for you. So we'll, like we'll keep talking more about that when we actually have something that is like more usable, but I think that's, uh, I haven't seen anything like this before and it's, it's very interesting to explore how that will change how we write applications. Yeah, I think like this whole conversation started when I posted into the unpopular React Opinions thread uh, saying something like uh, the React Fiber code base is super annoying. Um, and this has been super helpful because I feel at least, you know, based on this that I, I, you know, I would be a lot more comfortable going hacking around, you know, the Fiber code base after getting this run through. So super thanks for that, Dan. What was the... I guess most illuminating part for you that helped you maybe feel more comfortable going into the code base now? I think it was the focus on the three files. I think a lot of the React code base, uh, some of the error stack traces that we saw earlier, the errors were in line 2,262 and column 241 <laughs> or something. And you know, just the sheer size of it kind of makes you want to take a step back and go to be a farmer or <laughs> uh, whatever, sure. uh, but but just you know, like looking at you know, understanding the structure of it better, understanding the different phases of it, and know, seeing how it's been localized um, into these few key files. I think that was the biggest sort of hurdle breaker for me. Yeah, I think knowing that things are broken up into those phases, and then also understanding just like what's actually being mutated with the fiber are really like those key elements that you need to like start really diving into the code base and playing around with it. Yeah, and I, I definitely, I used to be um, a lot more deeply invested into React internals when I was hacking around React Native in its early days because you needed to because nothing really uh, worked all that well. Um, and now all this change has happened and I've been kind of reluctant to relearn everything because I feel like all of my investment that I did all those years is kind of, you know, vanished in thin air. Uh, but, you know, I think this is a clear message, at least for me, that I need to uh, get out of my out of my comfort zone and, and start relearning because there's so much that's happening that is incredibly cool mm. uh, and so many things that we can do now that we couldn't before. So sometimes yeah. it's just hard to know where to start, but just knowing what a fiber is, what it means, what work in progress fibers are, what the completed steps are and all these phases, what, what those are called internally, that helps a lot. Just seeing the file names makes a lot more sense when you understand these terms. Yeah. And of course, you don't need to know any of this stuff to actually work with React, but I've had such joy going through the code base and understanding it and seeing something so completely outside the realm of the UI work I do every day. That was just like utterly fascinating. Understanding like double buffering and seeing it happen was really amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think for, for a lot of us, I mean, we already work in very tooling heavy, um, you know, code bases. Uh, so more tooling, you know, and your, and your after hours isn't necessarily what you want to do. But one thing that is very cool here is seeing the connection between these internals and then the amazing user interfaces that we can actually build um, with them, how much easier it makes everything. Uh, because at least right now, I feel like it's the golden era of, of like quickly hacking together some UIs. It's never been really easier than this. Um, so yeah, it, it all kind of connects at the end.
yeah. I think like, I would emphasize that it's still like not an easy code base to work with. But like my argument is not, it's, it's not so much about like, well, let's just make it easier to work with. It's just that the constraints are difficult. Like implement it in a way that allows you to like start doing something and then like abort it and do something else and like come back to it and make sure that all, all of this still works if you like batch it or delay it and uh, like supporting all the different things that components can do. It's like, it's pretty challenging set of constraints, but then I think like this architecture is like, it helps just like uh, work against these constraints. And sometimes it means that maybe something that seems like, oh, it's obvious, like here's how I, how I do it, but it actually has some flaws. But eventually when you get to a good solution, it's actually, it's actually like really good. So it's, it's fine that it takes some effort, but it's, it's worth it in the end. Yeah, but I think it's 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 screencast like this one and all the documentation that you keep pushing out both on your blog and 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 on the React docs that really makes this more uh, approachable. So uh, you know, I think you're on the right track and making it easier for the rest of us. So thank you so much for organizing this. It was a lot yeah. of fun. No, yeah, thank you. Great. Let's hope the recording works because it would be a shame <laughs> if it didn't. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, Dan. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Ha have a good day, everyone. Uh, let's talk soon. All right. See you. Bye, y'all.